So today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install the KDE Plasma desktop environment on top of Raspberry Pi OS, but with good performance. Right now, don't click off this video right now saying, hey, this isn't going to perform well. Why am I even watching this? Well, I'll be showing you guys a few tips to actually improve your performance a ton and make it even a usable state on Raspberry Pi OS. It's going to be a fun video. And yeah, so before we get started, I do want to mention a few things. You can do this on Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, but I would highly recommend going for the 64-bit version. With these tests, I get much, much better performance while using the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS Lite. So that's what I'm going to be using for this video. But of course, you can go with the 32-bit version as well. But you're just going to get much better performance with the 64-bit version. So to download that version, go over to the web browser right here. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Go right here to Raspberry Pi OS ARM64 Lite. We want, we want the Lite version because if we download the full version, we're already going to have the LXC desktop environment and it's going to kind of crash with, with each other. But this way, we don't have any desktop environment installed. It's really easy to do so. So click Images, go right here to the latest version. It needs to say 2021-0528. That's the latest version as the making of this video. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click the Lite version. Click that one, download it to your computer. After downloading it, open up the Raspberry Pi Imager or whatever flashing tool you prefer. I prefer the Raspberry Pi Imager. And you can USB boot this if you like, but I'll be using an SD card for this video. I'm going to go choose OS, use custom. I'm going to choose my image right here. It's called our Raspberry Pi OS ARM64 Lite. Click open. To storage that, that device, I'm going to click right and yes. Then we'll get to installing the desktop on our light system after it's done flashing. Alrighty, so after flashing the operating system to our SD card or USB stick, we're going to see the screen right here. It's going to say Raspberry Pi login. So what we're going to want to type is Pi and then Raspberry is the default password. And this is just the same as normal 32 Raspberry Pi OS, it's just the 64 bit version. But we do want to change our password so that we're secure and no nothing can happen to our system. So first, we're going to want to type P A S S W D for to change our password. Type in your current password, which is going to be Raspberry, and then try change it to whatever you like. I'm going to change it to something secure. After that, we're also going to want to type sudo password. So we we change that one as well. Type it in. Type your new password. And now we're all secure with, oh, I typed that in wrong. So now we're all secure, all our passwords are changed, we are ready to install KDE Plasma Desktop. Well, first we actually need to update our system. So do a quick sudo apt update, so we'll get the latest repositories and everything like that, or we're not going to be able to get all the packages, it's just a little error. So sudo apt update is what we're going to want to type. type type that in and it's going to start getting everything from the internet alrighty so after that system update we're actually going to want to go ahead and do a full system upgrade so we get the latest packages and everything like that so just do a sudo apt upgrade so that that update actually takes in place and everything gets fixed so type that in real fast and let it do its thing alrighty so now after that full system upgrade we're to the part where we're going to actually install the full kd desktop on our raspberry pi but this is the part where you're actually going to have to choose which KDE package you want. There's a KDE full package which gets everything. It kind of is bloatware because it comes with a lot of pre-installed software. I wouldn't recommend installing the KDE full package. Then there's a KDE standard which just, which just has some standard packages. And that's probably the one I'm going to be going for. It has some essentials and stuff like that. Then there's the KDE Plasma Desktop, which is more bare bones, doesn't have any blow where it's basically just a desktop with a full, with a few essential applications like a terminal, a file manager, and stuff like that. So that one is also pretty good if you want a nice bare bones desktop. And then there's the Task KDE Desktop, which is more heavy. There's a lot of packages. So the two ones that I would actually recommend would be the KDE Standard Package and the KDE Plasma Desktop. But for this video, I'll be going with the KDE Standard Package. You guys obviously can choose whichever one you prefer, whichever one you want for your own desktop, but I'll be going with the KDE Standard. So what I'm going to type is sudo apt, apt install kd-standard. So that's basically all you have to type in your terminal, then hit enter. It's going to start grabbing all the packages needed. It, there's a lot of these you see, but if you have a good internet connection, it shouldn't take too long. Hit enter, and it's going to start downloading all the needed packages, and then it's going to go ahead and install them. So this part, you do need to be a bit patient, but just let this thing do its thing, and then you'll be able to enjoy 
KD Plasma on your Raspberry Pi. So now we finally have KD installed on our system, but man, this does not look like KD. Well, we actually have to do a quick reboot to actually get into the full graphical user interface. So just type in sudo reboot, and it will, after a quick reboot, it will actually launch us straight into the graphical user interface of KD Plasma. Here we are, we're at the KD login screen on our Raspberry Pi, so this is a pretty good sign so far. It looks like KD. Now let's try logging in. So right here we see, we see it says session and it says plasma. That's what we want. We're going to hit pi right here, type in that password that you changed a bit ago, type in that new password, hit enter, and it's going to start loading. I will show this in real time so you can see how long it actually takes to log in. You see we have this nice loading screen right here. So it definitely is one of the longer taking login desktop environments on the Raspberry Pi. But it should work theoretically, so let's see if it works. Give it some time right here, let that guy load up. And here we are, we have the Debian wallpaper, it looks kind of bland to be honest. And we are in the full KD desktop on our Raspberry Pi 4. But right after you do this, you might notice the performance is going to be terrible. Watch this. It takes so long to load, and all this things, everything here just doesn't look good. This is not usable so far. But here's a catch. What you need to do to make the performance better is to disable the compositor. So to do that, go Alt Shift F12. Your screen is gonna like reflash right now. And you see right now it should start to be a lot better. You see it already, you can feel the system is so much better. But we wanna make sure that the compositor doesn't turn on on boot. So we're gonna type, just start typing compositor right here. Let that guy load up. And we're, we're gonna wanna go enable compositor on startup, disable that click apply so now we don't have a compositor on startup so our settings everything is going to be so much faster this is a thing that really makes the performance so much better and it actually makes KD usable when this is disabled if you did want a compositor the rendering back can be changed to x render and then makes this to instant you will get better speeds if you still do want that compositor but I would definitely recommend just leave the compositor off. You'll get much, much better performance and it is just better th for the whole thing. So leave the compositor off. We go right here, you see this guy is usable. Look at this, I'm launching all these settings and this is actually usable on a Raspberry Pi. It's just so awesome to see KD actually running on a Raspberry Pi, but my current resolution looks like it's still at 720. So let's try to actually fix that. Okay, so now that we got the compositor removed and now we have a nice fast system and I changed my my resolution you see now it looks much bigger much better the 1080 looks so much better than 720 but now let's take a look at the system resource usage to actually see how much ram we're using on a fresh boot to decide whether you should use this or not so type in console right here if you because that's a default terminal on kd plasma or terminal it's not showing up let's go right here real fast go over to applications go to system Right here we have terminal console and what we're going to type is h stop real fast pull the sky over to the middle and you see that even the blur in the, in the back actually does work well it's actually performing fairly well it's really surprising type in h stop right here and right now on idle i'm only using 540 megabytes of ram that is actually really surprising it's almost half of what gnome would use on this system and we're getting better performance than gnome that i've ever had on raspberry pi os this is pretty darn awesome to see 500 megabytes RAM usage on KD Plasma on Raspberry Pi OS, and it's actually usable. Like this, these menu scrolling things aren't are pretty darn smooth. I mean, this is really usable. This is amazing. Right here, let's type Neo Fetch real fast. And right Neo Fetch, you see, we actually because we're on the 64-bit version, we have the Debian logo rather than the full Raspberry Pi OS logo. And yeah, everything is shown correctly. We're all we're looking good. Next right here, if we do want to look at what version of KD we're running, we go right here, we just type in info, info center right here. And right here we see we are actually on KD version 5.14.5. So sadly, we're kind of on an old version considering that just the other day, KD version 5.24 was released. But Debian is known for holding back software and kind of having outdated software. So that is kind of a bummer. You're not going to get the latest version of KD on Raspberry Pi OS. 
but you're still going to be able to run KD with pretty good performance. So now let's take a look at some of the applications that actually come on here that are pre-installed with the KD standard version. You go to applications and graphics, we have a few graphic apps like Ocular, Image Viewer, and some default image viewers, pretty normal. And internet, we actually come pre-installed with the theme editors and just some, all these apps, Honestly, I wish I didn't install the standard version because some of these apps I do not need. I'll be deleting them probably. We have Chromium that comes pre-installed. Pretty awesome. We have Conquer, which is the KD web browser. No one uses it. I don't even know why they have it. We'll take a look at some web browsing in a minute. And then multimedia right here, we have a music player and a video player. Pretty standard. Office, we come pre-installed with just some Office viewers. None of them are LibreOffice. You could install LibreOffice yourself if you like. In settings, we have the system settings. Pretty normal. In system, we have like the terminal, the file manager, the info center, and our software center. And then in utilities, we have some just some system settings. All these things are pretty normal. But now let's take a look at something like the system Discover. Discover is a software center. I have noticed that this Discover seems to be extremely slow on actually loading up applications on KD. Even the launch was a bit slow. Well, I just said that and it loaded up. Let's say like we want to type in something. Let's search for an app. Let's say KD and Live. I know it's right there, but it's the only thing that came to my mind. Let's search it. So, Discover seems to actually function on Raspberry Pi OS. Pretty awesome. If I click on it, we should get some more info. Yeah, we get some more info about the application. And it works. So, it's pretty cool to see Discover actually running on KD on our Raspberry Pi. Next, I mean, we basically all these things, I don't really need to go through them. They're just some default applications on here. Now, our desktop does look pretty dirty let's try to fix that let's open up our system settings and try to actually fix that and change the theme a little bit because kd is known for being able to customize it however you like and it's really easy to do so so let's go over to the workspace theme look and feel let's actually get a new look let's click this button right here get new look and let's wait let's see how long this takes to load all the data i have noticed this one actually to be kind of slow compared to other kd distros it kind of just loads that data for a while until it actually loads it all up so that has been kind of one of the bummers well here we have it so it loaded up and i actually really do enjoy the nordic kd theme i'm going to click the nordic i'm going to click install let that guy install. I know it says network error five, but last time it said this as well, but it actually did install it. So it's kind of surprising, but interesting. So while it's installing, I'll go over to the desktop theme. I'll also right here, go ahead and download the Nordic theme right here. So let that guy load data. And I'm just gonna go through these different themes, install them, and I'll get back to you guys after I get everything installed to show you guys what it actually looks like as a final result. So, as you can tell, I obviously I didn't change much because I didn't spend a lot of time on this, but normally when I theme KD, I actually spend a few hours, I really go down bare bones, change a lot of things, change the dock, change a bar, I really do a lot of stuff to KD to make it look beautiful, but for this video I didn't do much, but it's just showing you guys that it is possible on our Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS to change a the theme using the settings and you can have a really nice functional desktop that really does run exceptionally well on our Raspberry Pi. But before we end this video, I do want to go ahead and show you guys some web browsing performance. And to mention, this is still Raspberry Pi OS, so all the same software, Pi apps, Pi Kiss, everything is still going to be functional, but this is still the 64 bit uh, version of Raspberry Pi OS, so you have to keep that in mind. But if you did like, you could go with a 32 bit version if you need 32 bit applications, but I would still sh strongly recommend the 64 bit version due to some better performance. Let's maximize our Chromium right here. I'm actually going to go over to appearance. And go use GTK Plus to actually change the theme. It's gonna look a lot better after that. Well, no, this is QT, my bad. But let's type in Pi4 Raspberry Pi organization and see what happens. Type in Raspberry Pi org. It loads up really smoothly as you can see. Web browsing, scrolling through this guy. It's basically as good as the default Raspberry Pi OS. I am honestly surprising. I'm so surprised right now how well this is working. Let's open up another tab real fast type in amazon.com 
and then let's see how Amazon starts loading up. So it loads up exceptionally well. It scrolls incredibly well on here. And let's take a look at our RAM usage as well, just to see, get an idea of how much we're using right now. Open up console, type in htop. With two tabs open, I am using about 800 megabytes of RAM. So it definitely is a bit higher than default on Raspberry Pi OS. But for KDE, pretty good. Everything runs really well. As you see, web browsing is definitely doable on this. It's almost as good as the default Raspberry Pi OS. So now for some YouTube video playback, I'm actually going to surprise. Is this going to turn out well or not? I kind of have some doubts. I actually haven't tested video playback yet. So we'll see if Big Bug Bunny can play at 720p without dropping frames on KD Plasma. Let's see. Give YouTube a second to load up. And we'll go over to the search bar real fast and give it a go. So here we are with Big 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 Bug Bunny. I can't say it for some reason. Here we go. Here's our 720p video. Let's make sure it's at 720 after it loads up, and then we'll be rocking. It's at 480 right now, like usual, when I try to launch these videos. We up that to 720p and go stats for nerds real fast. Skip to the middle where there's more action. And here we are. I mean, we're at 720p video right now, and we're dropping about 16 frames. So it obviously is a bit more than you like on a 720p video on the Raspberry Pi, but it's watchable. I mean, there's not that much screen tearing going, going on. And usually, you just want a video to be able to watch on your Raspberry Pi, and this is with the beautiful KD Plasma desktop running exceptionally well on Raspberry Pi OS. So I could obviously go on a long time about video playback, software support, theming, but this video is more of a guide on how to get it set up, how to improve, improve performance by dis disabling the compositor, and get it running really well on your Raspberry Pi 4. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you do try this out because you'll be surprised on how smooth your experience is actually going to be. This is almost comparable to Manjaro KD, but I will still consider Manjaro KD the best KD distro for the Raspberry Pi 4. But this is definitely comparable. It runs really well, and I am just excited to see KD running on Raspberry Pi OS this well. So let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this video. Are you going to try this out or are you not? Let me know down below in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>